find a way to clip it. There you go. Thank you. Does that work? Yep. All right, you guys all set? All right, good morning. I'm uh, Pete Newsham. I'm the chief of the Prince William County Police Department. Uh, I don't have to say to you that I wish I wasn't standing here this morning before you. Uh, this is horrific. Uh, every uh, adjective that you can use to describe uh, a tragedy, uh, you can use to describe what happened here last night. Uh, I want to, first of all, I want to express my condolences personally to the family and friends uh, of the four folks who lost their lives uh, last night. I also want to express condolences on behalf of everybody here at the Prince William County Police Department. Uh, to give you what we know, and I have to caution you uh, that this is preliminary in nature. We're in the infancy stages of this investigation, uh, but I'll share with you what I think we know at this point. Uh, last night at about 4.30 p.m., uh, right here in the 5200 block of Mansfield Court, uh, our officers responded to a call for service. Uh, the call for service was, uh, and I'm summarizing essentially, that there were shots fired into a home uh, and that there were potentially uh, victims inside who had been killed. Uh, when the officers arrived on the scene, they found the door ajar. Uh, when they got into the home, they found four people who were deceased inside, uh, two adult males and two adult females. Uh, they later learned that the person who had called our emergency communication center was actually the suspect in this case. Uh, to their credit, uh, the Prince William County officers on the scene were able to stop that suspect. Uh, he was taken in last night as a person of interest and he was questioned. Uh, and we were able to establish probable cause uh, for an arrest. And that person has been charged uh, this morning uh, with four counts of second degree murder and other additional charges. Uh, we believe uh, the weapon that was used in this particular case was discarded in the home uh, and it was recovered. Uh, and I can give you the names of the victims. Uh, the first victim, Miguel Flores, is a 44-year-old male. Uh, his wife, Kelly Sotelo, who's a 42-year-old female. Uh, as I understand, the two of them were just recently married. Uh, their daughter, Carrie Sotelo, who is a 19-year-old female. Uh, and then there was a gentleman who was renting uh, a room in the home, and his name is Richard Corrales, and he's a 37 year old male. The suspect in this case is David Nathaniel Main. Uh, he is a 24 year old male who also lived in the home uh, and he has been taken into custody and as I said he's been charged with four counts of second degree murder. Uh, I can attempt to answer any questions that you guys have at this time. What's the suspect's relation to the occupancy of the home that they found dead? The suspect has a relationship with one of the folks that lived in the home. throughout the home, it appears. And the other point I want to clarify is last night we believe that all victim, all four victims uh, died as a result of gunshot wounds. Uh, from what we understand right now, we can confirm three victims died of gunshot wounds and one is undetermined at this time. We're going to have to wait until the autopsy is completed to see. Uh, the other thing that we're using as a, as a working theory uh, is that the 19-year-old female was in all likelihood murdered first, and then the three other adults were subsequently murdered. And that's really all, all we have right now. That's a working theory. That's preliminary information. Chief, did, uh, did the suspect give, I mean, call 911, I mean, did, did he give any indication as to what transpired leading up to the first, second, third, fourth shot in the fire? I think the information that he was given was inconsistent with what actually happened, so he may have been trying to elude the police, is, is my guess. Chief, um, neighbors are telling us that nobody heard any shots. Can you give us any indication of what kind of weapon was Yeah, we don't want to talk specifically what kind of weapon it was, but I think that that's fair, uh, that the neighbors did not hear something because of the weapon that we've recovered. Uh, no, there's another member of the home who was not murdered. We believe that uh, he had a relationship with. And that was the young person who told the child that they were able to get away from the house. Oh, uh, 
Th you know, no, actually not. So. Where did you find the suspect? The suspect was located in pro pro close proximity to the home, so he hadn't gotten too far. He had left the home on foot. What did he say specifically when he, when he called to report that in? They said he might have been trying to... Yeah, home. generally he was. He said that there were shots fired to, into, into the home, and, so, and there was folks that might be dead inside. Making uh, it sound like somebody from outside shooting rather than somebody in. Exa exactly, which is, like I said, inconsistent with what the evidence shows in this in this case. Can you tell us, was there, can you tell us the time frame that you believe that the shootings occurred over? And can you also tell us, did the people live in the home or were they visiting or what was, and anything more you can tell us about the neighborhood? All, all of the victims that were murdered lived in the home. Uh, there were uh, two uh, adults that were married, uh, their daughter, and then the fourth victim uh, was a gentleman who lived in the home. He was renting. The time frame is something we're still trying to piece together. Like I said, the working theory is that the 19-year-old female was murdered first. Do you, do you have a motive of why this person wanted to We're crime? still trying to nail down the motive in the case, uh, but it's, it's I mean, uh, the only word that I can use to describe it is senseless. Absolutely senseless that anyone would, would take four lives the way that they did. Uh, anybody who was out here last night knows that there was a huge group uh, of friends and family members who were gathered, and they were completely distraught uh, over the loss of these lives. And I can only only begin to imagine what they're feeling today. So, 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 you know, this guy has been charged. Uh, my hope is that he never ever sees the light of day again. So, in case this did the math here, it sounds like were there seven residents in this home at the at the time of, of the shooting. Uh, it's unclear how many folks were home. We believe the four decedents were in the home at the time, clearly, of, of the shooting. And, and if there were additional folks, uh, we, don't, we don't have that kind of detail. And you said there was one other person that, was, that, that resides in the home and the shooter resided in the home? And so yes, yes. So that's, how many is that? That's six. Or six. Yep. Is that the total that you understand that resides? No, I think there were others that live in the home as well. He, he acted alone, yes. And then you're saying the suspect had a relationship likely with someone who lived in the home, but they weren't there at the time. Correct. Did anybody who was living in the home actually own the home? I don't know ownership. Uh, Jonathan is saying no. Do you think this was some sort of really horrible domestic situation that just went extremely wrong? Um, I, you know, we hear about the rise in domestic violence situations, especially since the pandemic began and people having to spend more time to, with each other. Do you think that played into it? Well, we're not at a point to comment, you know, on that type of detail on the motive. Uh, I can say that in all likelihood, this is a domestic situation. Uh, and then as we get more details, we'll, we'll be happy to share them. We're going to have to have some autopsies done. Uh, we're going to have to take a look at the forensic evidence that we have in the home to try and, you know, somebody was asking about a timeline, uh, to try and figure out the timeline. I can tell you uh, we do have sufficient cause to charge this suspect in the case. We feel very strongly uh, that we have sufficient probable cause, and, and that's why we made the arrest. Do we believe that suspect's tied to any other incident? We had attorney shootings at homes in the, over the weekend. I mean, is this an isolated incident in Sharkton, or might he be linked to other it, crimes in the area? We don't have anything to suggest that the suspect in this case was uh, involved in any other crimes in the area. In fact, his criminal he does not have a criminal history um, that would indicate this type of behavior. Along those same lines, are there any other, are, there, are you investigating any other possible criminal activity in the home? Like no. Now it's just a no, this is a horrible, like I said, unnecessary loss of life. Yes. Did they provide anything? We did. And that person is fully cooperating with us. Were they able to tell you anything that, that you can share with them? You give, I, I can't share with you, but he's that person has provided us very valuable information. He's been very cooperative and, and is also very distraught about what happened in his home. He lives here as well. I think that's uh, the, 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 what the charge implies, yes.
You know, uh, I can only comment uh, from my experience, anybody that would take four lives is not in the right state of mind. Whether that's a professional you know, diagnosis, I think that remains to be seen. Uh, While we, these were incidents were we're, it's unclear if there were others in the home who escaped. It's unclear. Yeah, yeah. Were there any children who were really in the home right there at any point? There, there, I believe there is at least one child that lives in the home. Was that that child, child was not in the home. We do not believe at the time. Okay. Yeah. And are, is that child, was that their parents killed or do you know the relation to? Yeah, yeah I, I don't think I want to get into that kind of detail. Okay. And can you tell us anything about the, uh, a little more about the weapon that was used or what type of weapon he used? We're not going to talk about the weapon at this point, but we will release that information as the court documents get got un get unveiled. Can you answer if maybe it was a, a registered um, a, a legal weapon? or? I can't answer that because, frankly, I don't know. Do you have yeah. a more solid number about how many occupants live in this or do reside in this home? I do not. Yep. Chief, you mentioned that there are uh, clean criminal history for your suspect. Do you know, were there any active EPOs? No, there's like no. Nope. Yep. Thank you all uh, very much. Do you have one more question? I do. The vehicle that was towed, do you know really which one the type of suspect's vehicle? I don't know which vehicle it towed, but there's going to be a series of you know investigative steps that we will take because we want to make sure that we make the very best case possible. Uh, we have families, you know what I mean, and we have friends of the victims that are relying on us uh, to do our job. And I can tell you, uh, up, up to this point. Uh, I feel very comfortable that we have, and we're going to continue to do so, and so we can get justice in this case. You thank you. To think anybody else was involved? No, there's no reason to believe. We believe it. We have the one person that was involved. So thank you all very much. All right. So everybody knows we're going to send out an email uh, here in just a bit that has a mugshot of the individual spelling spellings of uh, everybody's names, the victims, and and the suspect. Um, Anybody have any clarifying questions that maybe I can help address? 